You are my sunshine. Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Heather and as always, I'm reading with a vengeance and as always, I hope you are as well. How is everybody doing? If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are a new subscriber, very warm welcome to you. I'm glad that you are all here and I hope everybody is doing very, very well. As you can tell from the thumbnail, I am doing a pretty decent, pretty significant unhaul. It is my very first unhaul and I'm a little nervous about it. So, um, as I've mentioned in a previous video, and I don't know when I'm going to publish this, um, and I'll tell you why in a minute. I mentioned in a previous video that my husband and I will be selling our house and we will be uh, downsizing significantly. I have mentioned in previous videos that I am someone who has been trying to uh, ascribe, is that a good word? to the minimalist type of lifestyle. I've been, as I get older, the less stuff I acquire, the less stuff I want living rent free in my house. So our next home will be smaller for sure. Our very, very next home, we're, we are actually toying with the idea of living in a travel trailer or a fifth wheel for a certain amount of time. My husband retires next year and when he does retire, we will be moving out of state and we'll be moving south. And then we'll probably be building our next house. And so we will be needing to have some living arrangements while we're building our next house. If, we, if our house sells sooner rather than later, that's the other reason why we were considering living in a travel trailer. Lots of other details and logistics and stuff involved in making this decision and seeing it through, which I won't go too far <laughs> into here. Uh, but as it pertains to booktube here, it, that's why I'm doing an unhaul. There are books that I have on my shelf that just I'm not going to have room for and they don't really, it doesn't really make sense to uh, store them. And with each book that I talk about in this video, I will get into the whys of that for each book. <laughs> so we are saying goodbye to some books in this video. And I want to say that as I went through it, you know, like I said, it was my first unhaul and getting rid of books. It, it wasn't easy for me. And I feel like, I think I have like 17 books for this video. I feel like I can probably go back through my shelves and find probably at least that many that also need to go, but baby steps, you know, you can't rush into these things. So <laughs> I have 17 books to start. There might be another on unhaul video coming in the next, I don't know, not too distant future as it winds down to, you know, you know, the circum our living circumstances. So, um, so we're starting off with 17 today. Let's get started. So the first book that I am saying goodbye to is The Snowman by Joe Nesbo or Yo Nesbo. Uh, I believe he is, is he Swedish? Norwegian? Finnish? What is it? So Joe Nesbo, he's a Norwegian author and The Snowman is the seventh in the Harry Hole series. They made a movie on this one and which is kind of the reason why I read this one first. I don't think you have to read uh, these in order. I, I didn't have any problem with the plot. I enjoyed this book. The only reason I've held on to it is because my husband hasn't read this one yet, but he's had multiple opportunities to read it and he hasn't grabbed for it. So um, if he has the urge to read it sometime in the future, I know they have it at, at the library. So this one is going to go in somebody else's hands. Who's looking for it? I'll probably drop this one off at a little free library. But yeah, I'll read um, other uh, books in this series. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I ended up giving this one four stars, so. But I've read it, I won't reread it. I'm not typically a rereader, but that's not set in stone. Most books I won't reread, and this one falls into that category. The next book I'm unhauling is The Magician, no, just Magician Master by Raymond E. Feist, or Feast. This is my husband's book, not gonna lie. And he's not a rereader either. Sometimes there are books that he will send to his kids um, this is not one of them, I guess, and it's living rent-free in my house, and 
Uh, it's not a book that I think I will ever read. I thought sometimes maybe my husband will read a book and if he really enjoys it, you know, we hold on to it. But this one isn't for me. I'm not even sure. Uh, it, it looks clearly like a historical fantasy or, yeah, uh, follows an orphan called Pug, apprentice to a sorcerer of the enchanted land of not even gonna try to say it. Then he was captured and enslaved by the Surani, a strange warlike race of invaders from another world. Not my cup of tea. Next one is Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. This is like a brand new book. I might actually sell this on Pango Books because it is in pristine condition. If you have followed my videos, you know I have a hard time with classics. I read Treasure Island uh, in July. I struggled with the language and I know that uh, Charles Dickens, his language will probably even be more difficult for me than Robert Louis Stevenson was. And so I, I read a, the first couple of lines of this book and I'm like, yeah, I just don't think that this is going to be for me. I don't have to, I'm sure I don't have to explain the synopsis of this one. This one is a classic. And even if I did try to attempt this at some point in the future, it probably won't be within the next six months. And so, like I said, we really have to downsize. <laughs> of course, I'd be able to find this at my library if I really wanted to get to it. So yeah, not holding on to this one. The next two books I'll talk about together, uh, and that is The Enemy and a Heart, The Hard Way by Lee Child. These are Jack Reacher books. I've read the first two Jack Reacher books and I really enjoyed them. And I will read further Jack Reacher books, but this is, I forget which one's which, but one's number eight and one's number 10 in the series. And uh, I don't wanna hold on to them until I get, I wanna read the Jack Re Reacher series in order. Of course, I have to read three through seven before I get to these ones and yeah, I just don't need to hold on to them until I get to them. I don't even know when I'm going to read the third Jack Reacher novel. So yeah, I won't be holding on to these. And again, these are easily available either at the library or secondhand store. I'm pretty sure I got these from a secondhand store. They're in pretty good shape. This one looks brand new. Um, this one's definitely been beat up a little bit. Uh, so I will probably, these will probably go to little free libraries as well. I can't remember when I got this one, where I got this one, but I know it's been on my shelf for a super long time, and that is Practice to Deceive by Anne Rule. It is a true crime book. Which one is this one about? Um, where are my glasses? I don't have my glasses. Poop. Christmas time murder off the coast of Washington State, Whidbey Island area. The murder of Russell Douglas. I like true crime. I don't read it as that often. I've read Anne Rule, and she definitely knows how to write a true crime. I read the one about T Ted Bundy, but my favorite of hers that was absolutely unput downable, I read years and years ago was Small Sacrifices. If you like to true crime and uh, you haven't read Small Sacrifices, I highly recommend it. This one, I just, I, I'm not intrigued by the, the specific story of this one and I'm not in a mind for true crime right now and I don't see myself doing so in the next six months or so. So I'm gonna let this one go. This next book is uh, one of my husband's books. He just finished this one. This is Peace Talks by Jim Butcher and this is the Dresden Files uh, series. I think this is the, the second to last one in the series. Not the last one that's going to be written, but the last one that's currently available. And then my husband is currently reading the most recent one. Um, I haven't read any of these. And again, I think that these are more my husband's style. Harry Dresden, Chicago's only professional wizard. Yeah, I'm not so sure that's up my street. I'm pretty sure he got this one at a secondhand store, so I'll probably donate this one. I likely won't read it in the in the foreseeable future, so I'm letting that one go. The remainder of the books uh, are mine. Kind of hard to let these books go, and I'll tell you why. Okay, I talked about this in a previous video, but if you're new to my channel, I'll tell I'll tell the story, uh, but I forget if it was last year or the year before. I wanna say it was two years ago for my birthday. My husband is like the best birthday gift giver ever of all time, and he does really, really creative things for my birthday. And one year what he did was he sent an email to like 12 or 15 of my girlfriends who I'm either really close to or I've been in a book club with. He asked for them to 
to recommend a favorite book of theirs that they would recommend to me. Uh, and then to write a note of why they picked that book, why they loved that book, and why they thought that I would love it. And they all did it. I think about 12 of my friends uh, participated. And what he did was he went out to secondhand stores and he bought all those books uh, that they recommended. And then he pasted, he printed out their note that they wrote and pasted it inside the cover of each of these books. And it was the most magical gift ever. I mean, each of my friends, you know, basically just writing me a love note that had to do with books and it was amazing. And I thought that I would always and forever keep those books, those copies of those books. It turns out uh, that that's not possible right now. However, what I plan on doing is kind of making a little photo album uh, that's more compact and it'll have a photo of the cover of the book that they recommended and then like on the, the other face page, the note that they wrote for me. That's how I'll kind of keep that memento, but I just don't, I'm not gonna have the space to hold on to these books. Some of them I've already read. Some of them I read almost like in the months following that gift that it was given to me. And then there's a couple of them that I just don't think I will ever read. The first one, Until I Find You by John Irving, um, a doorstop. <laughs> it's a huge, massive book, takes up a lot of real estate on my shelves. And John Irving, I just is, I don't think is the author for me. I attempted A Prayer for Owen Meany, which is a favorite of a lot of people, an idea enough that I couldn't get through it. I always thought, that I would attempt it, like maybe I wasn't in the right headspace for it and I'd reattempt it, I haven't yet. And then there's another book that I read of his, oh yes, A Widow for One Year. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't like that, I mean, it was a slog to get through it. So I don't think I will be reading this one, which is unfortunate. And it's funny because the friend who recommended this book, we have a lot of the same taste uh, and books that like a lot of people don't really care for, but she loves and I love. <laughs> so I, who knows, maybe I would love this book. I'm not sure. And maybe I'll try to read it at some point, but it can't live in my house right now. The next book uh, <laughs> is Little Women by, of course, Louisa May Alcott. I read this book soon after I was given this for this gift. I didn't really care for it. I mean, it was okay. It was cute, but it was a slog. I mean, it's not a small book. It is a classic. I would say it was not difficult to read though, as far as the language um, that classics typically have. But I think there's a lot of readers uh, that absolutely love this book. I am not one of them. <laughs> I didn't hate it, uh, but I, I didn't love it as, as much as I think a lot of people do. I think this is a cute cover. I think my husband did a good job picking the, the edition, but I will never reread it. And um, yeah, so I'm letting it go. Next book I'm letting go is Spoiler Alert, The Hero Dies by Michael Asiello. This is a memoir. I really enjoyed this one actually. I gave it four stars. Michael Asiello is a uh, like a TV columnist, successful one, and he was a founder of like TVLine.com. And basically this tells the story of the love of his life, Kit, who is diagnosed with a uh, very rare, aggressive form, I believe of brain cancer. You know, their time dealing with him being very, very sick. And it, is a very well told story. It's heartbreaking, of course, but he, uh, Michael Osiello, really puts a lot of humor and wit into this book. I hate to use the word enjoy, but I mean, I gave it four stars. I, I really, really, really love this book. I think for just because of the sheer heartbreak, I would never reread it. Um, but I definitely recommend it. And I don't think this is up my my husband's street, so uh, I don't think he'll ever read it. So I'm letting it go. The next book I'm letting go is Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. Uh, this is a very well-known book. Looks like it was the winner of the National Book Award. This is a young adult novel and it deals with mental health. And I thought it was okay. I think I gave it three stars. Uh, I, enjo I enjoyed it. It was, I don't think Neil Schusterman is an author. He has a way of writing that I struggle with sometimes. This one was okay, 
but I definitely won't reread it. I think my husband also has read this, so there's really no reason for me to hold on to it. Next one I'm letting go of is All the Crooked Saints by Maggie Stiefotter. Is that how you say her name? She is a booktube darling. This is a young adult fantasy. I have a hard time with young adult fantasy. I continued to attempt it. I'm not sure why. Um, I want to like it. I really, really do. I'm not sure what intrigues me so much about young adult fantasy, but I, each time I'm kind of let down a little bit. I didn't hate this book. I, I gave it three stars, uh, but it just wasn't, you know, mind blowing to me. Don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful cover. I love this cover. I was super intrigued just by that. So this one is, let's see, any visitor to Bicho Raro, Colorado is likely to find a landscape of dark saints, forbidden love, scientific dreams, miracle mad owls, estranged affections, one or two orphans, and a sky full of watchful desert stars. There's more to the synopsis that I won't get into, and it sounded fascinating, but there's some level of suspending disbelief that I can't seem to reach with young adult fantasy, but I will continue to try. Next book I'm letting go of, I also I would consider a modern classic, I guess, and that's The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. You know, I read this for the first time years and years ago, I think um, probably 25 years ago, and I didn't like it, um, but I think it was like probably my first a dystopian novel and I don't think I got it at the time. I don't think my brain was quite ready for it. And I feel like if I reread it now, I would enjoy it more. I love the series. The series is fantastic. But again, I'm not a rereader. I mean, maybe someday I, I might reread it just because I would want to enjoy it as much as I enjoyed the show. And as much as I think I would enjoy it now with my current brain versus my 25 year old ago brain. Yet yeah, probably won't be in the near future if I reattempt it. So I'm saying goodbye. Next book I'm letting go. I definitely won't reread because romance is not really my thing. This one was okay. This is uh, P.S. I Love You by Cecilia Ahern. I loved the movie. The movie was absolutely adorable. It's a chunker of a book. And I don't think it needed to be that long for this story. So if you haven't seen the movie or read the book, this follows Holly and she has uh, recently been uh, widowed by the love of her life, her husband, Jerry. I think he died of a, a cancer, I believe, um, but early on in their marriage, he has to deal with it. And then she finds letters that Jerry wrote to her uh, knowing that he was going to die. Yeah, it follows that story. Uh, yeah, and it's funny because I, my review on Goodreads says, this was my first foray into the romance genre in a long time. Some might say it's not the best choice given this was Ahern's first novel and she was so young when she wrote it. While the same story could have been told in 150 pages less, it was sweet and not too sappy. I liked it even more that the ending wasn't what I thought it would be. The characters were sometimes cartoony, but there were some touching moments and I especially liked that Holly was imperfect as the main character. This is a rare occasion in which I preferred the movie. Yeah, not too bad if you like romance. I mean, I gave it three stars. That's saying something. I definitely won't be rereading it. The next book I'm letting go of is Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth. I absolutely loved this book. Loved this book. This is one of my favorites. If you haven't read this book, don't be swayed by the synopsis because basically the synopsis says, you know, oh, 12th century England, a bunch of monks get together to build a church. There's so much more. This actually reads kind of like a soap opera and it's a chunker too. Teeny tiny, teeny tiny letters on a bunch of pages. I probably won't reread it just because there's just too many books in the world that I wanna read, but I absolutely love this book. I highly recommend it. I'm pretty sure I gave it five stars. And I'm not really thrilled about this edition. So if someday I have a personal library again and I have a section of my all time favorites, I will include this book, just not this edition. <laughs> so this one's gotta go. The next book I'm letting go of is Codename Lease by Larry Loftus. It says the true story of the woman who became World War II's most highly decorated spy. I probably won't read this. I love historical fiction. Um, surrounding World War II. I really do. I'm not quite so sure I would enjoy a nonfiction about a true person. I'm not sure. This has been on my shelf for two years and I haven't gotten to it. I just don't think I will get to it. Certainly not in the next six months. 
So I am letting this go. Have you guys read this book? Am I making a mistake? I mean, you could actually even comment on any of the books if I'm making a mistake, because I'm sure they won't be out of the house by the time this video goes up, but who knows? Um, so yeah, goodbye. And finally, the book I'm letting go of is taking a bunch of real estate, and that is 112263 by my beloved Stephen King. I love this book. This is a fantastic book. OMG, it's bigger than my head, and it probably weighs more than my head. Do you know the human head weighs eight pounds? <laughs> if you know that reference, put it down in the comments. <laughs> Chunker of a book, absolutely fantastic. If you're not a Stephen King fan, if you haven't read Stephen King, if you don't like horror though, but you are interested and intrigued by his writing, I highly recommend this one. This is not a horror. Um, this is basically in a nutshell about a man who in present day finds a portal that leads him back to 1957 and he goes back and no matter how much time he spends back there, it could be up to years, um, when he comes back, he's only been gone for like two minutes and he keeps continuing to go back and tries to avoid the assassination of JFK or prevent, prevents the word, prevent the assassin assassination of JFK. Really, really good book. Highly recommend this. This is one of my five stars. It's taking up way too much space. It's too heavy. I can't hold on to it. I will probably send it to my mom because I have recently turned her on to reading Stephen King. She doesn't like horror either, but she loved Billy Summers, which isn't horror also. So this is the one I recommend next. So I'll probably send this to her. She can get her bicep workout as she reads it. But yeah, letting this one go. And that is it. Those are the books that I am currently letting go, unhauling, getting rid of. <sighs> it's kind of cathartic. Oh my gosh. I mean, I haven't physically gotten rid of them yet, but I feel like emotionally that I'm there, that I have cleansed myself of, <laughs> this, of this clutter. I hate to speak of books that way, but I just... I'm on that path where I am narrowing down my stuff and books will have to be included in that. Anyway, do you guys have any thoughts on these books? Am I making a mistake on any of the books that I'm unhauling that I haven't read yet? Let me know um, down in the doodly do. I would love to hear from you. If you're still watching at this point, I'd really appreciate it if you gave that like button a boop. And if you could subscribe, if you wanna hear more of my blather, I'd be happy to have you. Thank you so very much for watching. I really appreciated it. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.